Sometimes you may need to save some data locally from your application. And if this data is structured, you'll definitely need to use an SQL database. We can easily achieve this using a small and self-contained SQL engine for Flutter called SQLite. So we'll begin by using the SQLite package as seen here. And we'll also use the path package which will help us in accessing storage locations in our device as seen here. For this tutorial, we'll see how we can carry out the simple create, read, update, and delete functionalities using the SQL flight package. Therefore, let's go ahead and create our task object. And inside it, we can put in the different properties that we want. And for the task type, we have created a simple task type enum, which contains the elements today, planned, and urgent. We have also added an extension, task type extension, to get the name for each task type element. Also, don't forget to add the form string method, which will help us in serializing the task type when saving to the SQLite database. Back in the tax class, we can then add the constructor for all our properties. To make our implementation easier and our code cleaner, we will also define a table name for which I have defined it as stacks. And we'll also define column names in the database, which will correspond to the names of each property in the tax model class. Notice how we define the ID field here as underscore ID. Also, we'll define all the columns in a list of strings, which will help us later on in our code. Next, we'll define the different data types we'll use for the columns when creating our database. Therefore, I have created a bool type, which is basically a Boolean that is not null. Next, I'll create an ID type, which is an integer that we set as the primary key with an auto increment keyword so we can automatically assign an ID value for each element on the table. Next, we'll define the text type nullable, which is simply a nullable text type. And finally, we'll define a text type, which is basically a text type that is not nullable. For more data types compatible with the SQLite database, you can check the official documentation as seen here. Finally, don't forget to add your from JSON method, your to JSON method, and also your copy with method, which will enable for easy deserialization, serialization, and updating of the tax class. It's time to set up the actual database. This next step is important because we cannot read and write any data to the database if we do not have an open connection. Therefore, we create a class for which I have named app database and I have also added a private instructor inside it called underscore init. Next, we'll also create a global instance for the class named instance, which will also call the private constructor app database dot underscore init. Next, we define a new variable for the database instance, which is gotten from the package. After that, we then create a database getter, which returns a future of database. Inside it, we'll first check to see if the underscore database variable created earlier is already initialized. If it is, we then return the same database instance. If not, we then assign it to an underscore initialize DB method, to which we can then pass a file name for which I have created a file name constant here and I have named it as stacks underscore database dot db. Finally, we can then return the database instance as seen here. Now, to create the initialize db method, we first create a method underscore initialize db, which returns a future database and takes in a string for file name. Inside it, we first get the database's path using the SQLite package get databases path method. Next, we join the DB path and the file name so we can have the location and the file name of the database file. Finally, we open the database by supplying the DB file path, a version number, and the onCreate callback, 
which is called when the database is created. For the uncreate callback, we define an underscore create db callback, which takes in a database and a version number as arguments. Inside the underscore create db callback, we can then define our specific database schema. Therefore, we'll add a creation query to create the table for our tags using the db.execute method as seen here. Inside the method, we can then create our multi-line string literal, which will contain the query. Now to the query, we first add the create table query with the table name variable we created earlier on in our model class file. And inside the brackets, we can then define the different columns with their different data types, for which I have done according to the tax model class properties as we defined in our class file. Now, let's add our crude functions, starting with the C for create. Therefore, we will define a create tax method, which takes in a tax argument. Inside it, we get the database instance, which we can then use to call the db.insert method, which we'll use to add a new tax item to the table. Inside the db.insert method, we then add the table name, the tax that we want to create using the toJSON method. And then finally, we return the updated tax object with the ID that we have just gotten from the db.insert method. Next, we can add the R for the read function. To do this, we create a method called read all tax. This method will read or return a list of all the available tags stored in the DB. Inside this, we get the DB instance, which we can then use to call the db.query method. And inside the query method, we supply the table name. And then finally, we map and convert it to the tax object list using the from JSON method. If you want, you can add an order by clause to order the list in a certain way. For this, we are ordering by the due date in a descending order. Also, don't forget to add a close method, which basically calls the close method from the SQF flight package to close the database and free the device's resources when not in use. Now, let's move on to the UI and implement these two functions that we have just created. For this tutorial, we have a floating action button which opens a bottom sheet that has the form for our task, containing the tax title, the description, the tax types, the due date, and a simple switch to check if the tax is complete, and also a button to create the tax. Therefore, in our add tax bottom sheet, let's start by defining our app database instance and assigning it in the state of our widget. Inside your onSubmit method, we'll first of all check to see if the form is validated, set the loading value, and then save the form. And after that is done, we can then get the new tags from the form data using the from JSON method. And after that, we can use the app database instance and call the create task method. And then we pass in the new tags we just created. Finally, we can then stop the loading and pop the bottom sheet. Now, to display the list of tasks from the DB, we'll go to the home page. Therefore, I've created a simple home page widget which extends a hook widget, for which I am using the Flutter Hooks package as seen here. Now, back in the home page, we have defined an app database instance called DB. We've also defined some reactive variables for the task list and also the is loading state using the use state from the hook widget. Next, we'll also create a simple body widget variable with a late initialization, which we'll use to set our body widget. After that, we create a refresh tax method, which inside it first sets the is loading state to true. After which, it then sets the task state to the value returned from calling the db.readAllTax method we created earlier on in our app database class. And finally, we can then set back the is loading state to false. Once that's done, we can define a useEffect method and inside it, we call the refresh tax method we just created, after which we can then close the database to avoid overuse of resources. Now, Using the is loading state, we can set the body variable to a loading widget we have created if it is loading. 
If the tax list is empty, we can display a custom empty list widget as we have seen here. And if the tax state is not empty and the loading state is false, we can then set the body to a list view which displays the list of tax item and then returns in the item builder the task tile widget which we have created. And now in the scaffold, we can set the body of the scaffold using the body variable we have just assigned. And also we have added a simple floating action button which calls the show add task bottom sheet which we have created here to call the add task bottom sheet we created earlier. Now, before we can use the implementation, let's go to the main.dat file to make some changes. First of all, let's turn the main function to a future and inside it, we first ensure that the widget's flutter binding is initialized. Then we can also initialize the app database instance calling the app database .instance .database. Then finally, we can run our application. Now, after starting up the application, we can tap on the button to add a new task. And after adding the different fields, if we tap on the create button, we can see that the bottom sheet closes and a new tax item is added to the tax list from the database. And even if we carry out a hot restart, we can see that the application still persists the data we have just created. Now, to update the U for the update function, we simply come back to our app database class and add the update tax method like this, which returns a future int. And the update tax method takes in an argument of task. And using the DB instance, we can call the update method from the SQF Lite package. And then we can supply the table name, the tax to be updated using the toJSON method, a where clause to which we set it to the ID field as seen here. And finally, in the where args list, we add the tax ID. Now, in the add tax bottom sheet widget we had created earlier, let's start by adding a nullable task property, which will not be null if we tap on a tax item to edit it. Using this tax property, we can then create a state using the use state method for our task and assign it to the widget the task. Also, we can set the initial value of our form using the tax property we had just set. For this tutorial, we are using the form underscore builder package to handle form validations and other form data. To learn more about this, you can check out our tutorial on this topic from the description. Finally, in the unsubmit button, instead of just creating a new tax by calling the db.create task, we first check to see if the tax property is new. If it is, we know that it's a new tax and then we call the create task method. Otherwise, we call the update tax method with the updated tax using the copy with method as seen here. And back in the home page, in the show add tax bottom sheet method, we can then add a nullable task object as an argument. And after that, we can pass it to the add task bottom sheet widget like this. Finally, in our list view widget, under the tax style widget, we can add the unedit callback from our tax style widget, which simply calls the show add tax bottom sheet with the task item assigned to which we want to edit. And then using the dot then method, we can then refresh the whole list once the sheet is closed. And after a hot restart, when we tap on a task item, we expect it to open the add tax bottom sheet, which it did. Inside it, we can make some few changes to the items. And once we tap the save button, we can see that our tax has been updated with our new values. Finally, to implement the D for delete functionality, in the app database class, we create the delete tax method, which returns a future int and takes in an int ID as argument. And using the DB instance, we can call the delete method to which we pass the table name. Next, we pass the where clause and set the ID field as we have seen here. And finally, for the where args list, we can then add the ID argument inside. And for the UI, in our tax style widget, we have simply added a dismissible widget. We have also set the key 
using the value key to the tax.id, we have set the direction to dismiss direction.end to start. We have also set some background customizations. And then using the undismissed callback, we then call the undelete callback. And now back in the home page, under the tax style widget, we can then add the undelete callback, which then calls the db.delete tax with the tax ID supplied. And then we can call the refresh task method to refresh the whole list once the delete is done. And with that saved, if we swipe on a tax item to delete, we can see that it has deleted the item. And even if we reload the app by restarting it, we can see that the item has truly been deleted successfully. And with this, we can see that we have successfully implemented a crude functionality using the SQF Lite package. If you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching.